And good morning, Big Square Road Road.com with your morning horn of Z's, your sip of coffee. A great day to buy cryptos if you're in the market to buy crypto. <laughs> Everybody's like, not everybody, some people. The newbies are, oh my God, it dropped 10%. I bought too high. It's going to drop 10%, 20%, 30%, rise 10%, 20%, 30%. Put everything into perspective. Were you planning on selling today? Not many people were. So if you're not planning on selling, either hang tight and hodl or buy more. Uh, dollar cost averaging, I'm a big fan of. Huge fan of dollar cost averaging. Uh, when the guys that hodl it get their uh, product out there, they're going to have uh, some kind of roundup feature on a card and all kinds of things. Um, they're waiting for, I think they're waiting for the uh, the dust to settle with all the regulations. and. Um, I will be talking about that in the Friday road trip for private road members at Road Deruta today that I will post. I'll also be talking about massively undervalued uh, altcoins um, that uh, will get their day in the limelight. Uh, compared to the highs of 2017, obviously altcoins got destroyed. But the highs were inflated highs. Those were uh, mania type highs. People were swapping their Bitcoin for altcoins and things like that. Uh, it didn't feel like money to them, so they didn't care what kind of price they paid. They figured, you know, if Bitcoin went down, the altcoins would go down the same amount. But if the Bitcoin went up, altcoins would go up more. Obviously, that was not the case. But we did have a period where a lot of uh, startup companies, that's what the ICO craze was about. Those were all startup companies uh, that were getting their funding. And then the key is who is performing. And the next wave into the altcoins will be a huge one for the ones that did what they were supposed to do. And I am going to talk about um, about 10 of them in the Friday road trip. If you're interested, go to RoadToRuta.com and sign up for the private road membership right here, and you get one very token. This is one of the the uh, tokens I will be talking about. Massively undervalued. It was massively overvalued. It was too soon when it was up at four or five hundred dollars. It went too soon. Um, but Reggie's been working his ass off for the last year and a half, and the next run up is going to be a monster run. And the reason the price is so low is because it takes you know I could I could myself I could take $10,000 and drop the price of Vary by 50% if I wanted because it's all done on like Mercatox. You just go over there, you place your sell order, and you take out all the buy orders, and it, there's just no volume. It's easy to do. So on the flip side of that, when people are trying to get in because of announcements that, well, supposedly Reggie said he's going to make some announcements in June. So, um, yeah, getting your hands on some Vary will pretty much be impossible. So, yeah, great time to buy very while these prices are down. That's one of the coins I'll talk about and others. Um, but absolutely, you should be dollar cost averaging in. I'm not saying it might not go lower. It might go higher. In the, in the grand scheme of things, um, a lot of the cryptos are massively undervalued compared to where uh, the fiat monetary system is. They're printing money like it's going out of style. Truthfully, they're doing unlimited amounts of money behind the scenes and not telling anybody, especially in the United States. Um, everything else is just smoke and mirrors. When you give someone the ability to print unlimited money, um, they're going to do it until it destroys them. And that was the idea behind the derivative book and all the all the shenanigans that are going on. Um, it's amazing that you know in the financial markets, they, they believe it when the United States says, oh, we're $21 trillion in debt. Everybody says, oh my God, it's so horrifying. Try $21 trillion or try a few quadrillion. They don't tell you. They, there's no obligation for them to tell the world that they're printing money uh, or that they're utilizing credits. And that's uh, so. Yes, the old system is breaking down. It's a trust-based system. And when the trust is lost, who are you going to trust? You trust math. Because math... 2 plus 2 will always equal 4. And speaking of that, uh, Bitcoin sitting at 8300 uh, Nice little pullback. It hit right against resistance, the $9,000 mark. Um, there's not enough people in for a big crash, so you don't have to worry about that. 
Um, yes, they can drive the price wherever they want with a click of a mouse, but where do they want to drive it? That's the key. They want the cryptos to be in place and ready to go by the time the banks collapse. And that's that's the question. When's the next time we hit that September 11th, 2008 moment uh, when Hank Paulson had to go to Congress and say, we need $700 billion or everything's going to end tomorrow. This time it'll be $20 trillion. And Jerome Powell will be the guy. I don't think it'll be Jerome Powell. Probably Steve Mnuchin going to Congress. And you know they're going to say no to Steve Mnuchin. And of course, I would say no. He's an expert market rigger from Goldman Sachs. Um, and Jerome Powell was, was instrumental in getting all those derivatives into Deutsche Bank. That's why he's the head of the Fed. You know, it all comes back to why were these people put in the places they are? Why was Steve Mnuchin put in the, as the head of the Treasury? Because he was an expert market rigger. He ran the market rigging department, computer market rigging department at Goldman Sachs. That was his job. So why is he put in as a treasury? Because he's an expert market rigger. Trump, Trump wanted the market to do well, so yeah, you hire an expert market rigger. Um, and Jerome Powell, you know, <laughs> you know the Fed's going to have to deal with the Deutsche Bank, you know, forty-five trillion dollar derivative book along with the other derivative books. Who's the best guy to do that? Why not the guy who actually uh, was one of the guys involved in the merger of Bankers Trust? and Deutsche Bank back in the late 90s that transferred the monster criminal derivative book of Bankers Trust into a single entity within Europe, Deutsche Bank. And they're still dealing with that today. That Not only that, but they enhanced their derivative book because they got excited. And with derivatives, when you write a derivative and you're the guarantor, you get all your money up front. So Deutsche Bank got all its money up front, and then they didn't expect to have to pay out at the back end not in the kind of quantities they're going to have to pay out um, come the next financial uh, crisis. So I'm, I'm shooting for September. Keep an eye on September 11th, actually. That's what Ruta wrote in the sand right before uh, in 2007. And in 2008, it actually happened on 9-11. Of course, Ruta wrote 11 plus 9. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, go to roadtoruta.com. It's all in the Fed, Fed documents, uh, Fed, Federal Reserve Bank of Boston. And it all fits together. And yes, the idea was always to destroy the system. Absolutely. That is why we're seeing this. Donald Trump announces 5% tariff on all goods from Mexico. And that's why he's fighting with China. He knows the end of globalization will destroy the monetary system. And that's what they're shooting for, for uh, September timeframe. Um, so I hope you guys are ready. I hope you have actual assets in your own possession, cryptocurrencies in your own possession, gold, silver in your own possession. Everything else will go away. With the banking collapse, everything else will go away. So just be prepared. And this is the worst thing that Trump could do for the economy if the economy operated on a, um, <laughs> on a stable free market system, which it doesn't. So yes, Mnuchin can click and mouse at any time. I would say more. it's not really up to him. Uh, it would be up to Trump and the people who are behind Trump. The good guys, as I call them. Well, when they're ready to click the mouse again, like they did in 2008, um, everything will flow out of uh, the monetary system, out of the stock market, the bond market, and try to go somewhere else. That's when it gets crazy. And Cryptos, that's when the banks collapse. That's when we probably won't even know the price of any crypto or gold or silver as the exchanges and markets won't be around anymore. They will be destroyed because of the, the criminality of uh, how they run. And they're trying to fi fix it in cryptos right now. Uh, it's supposed to be a lot of, and I'm going to talk about this in the, in the Friday road trip, uh, a lot of work going on and will be announced soon. So I'll, I'll let you guys know about that. Um, so definitely Trump is trying to destroy the system. Mexico responds, we won't act desperately. Uh, Mexico has been um, a puppet of the United States for so long. You know, if, if you want to be tough, Mexico, why not just stop selling silver at cheap prices? Mexico has provided the world over 30% of all the silver that's ever been mined. Mexico would be the richest country in the world if they didn't sell their silver, give away their silver at ridiculous prices. 
Mexico is one of the largest, I think they are the largest silver exporter. It's like, it's like giving away the wealth of your country, Mexico. Jesus, what are you thinking? You really are stupid, stupid to allow these criminals to destroy the price of your most valuable commodity that you export and you give the likes of JP Morgan millions of tons, millions of tons of silver. This is insane. This is completely insane. And when I tell my Mexican friends that's what Mexico has done, they are livid at their politicians that are so corrupt or so stupid or a little of both to allow this to happen. It is insane. It is absolutely insane. Mexico could be the richest country in the world. All they have to do is say, screw you, USA, and all you banksters who are in here. We are confiscating all the silver in our country. And we will not sell it for anything less than $1,000 an hour. Voila, Mexico is the richest country. But right now, oh, no, no, you, you can't tell us not you know, to stop immigrants. This is all ridiculous. Make it so that people want to stay in your country, Mexico, want to build your infrastructure, want to build your economy. And you do that by allowing silver to go to 1000 bucks an ounce. You don't even have to you know, bid it up on the comics, which you could do as well. All you have to do is stop exporting silver and say, all silver mines are nationalized as of today. We will no longer bow down to the power elite and give them our national treasure. It's that simple, but they're not going to do it. And here's more on um, not winning. <laughs> the collapse in global trade escalates. Now, here's a, a little side note. I live in Oakland, California. A vast majority of the, uh, the money the government is allowed, you know, the city government is allowed to spend on social programs. Um, which is what they want to do. They want to give away everything. Comes from the uh, Port of Oakland. And with the crashing of uh, global trade, you can see the destruction of Oakland. Yes, I do plan on moving. Not yet. I'll be moving in a year. My son's got a year left of school. Um, but I do not see much hope for my beloved Oakland. It's already turned into a shithole like San Francisco. But, you know, it was, it was doing well because a lot of the San Francisco people were coming over here. We were kind of revamping downtown. And, and now I, I drive downtown. It's just it's getting worse and worse. And, worse. and the homeless, non, you know, the summer is going to be 50 times worse. All the drug dealers will be hanging out in the streets. We already see tents everywhere down there in downtown. And it'll move uptown. It'll move all over. You know, don't just because you live in a, a wealthy area in a certain uh, city environment, don't think it's not going to come knocking on your door, especially with a liberal um, government. You know, why are why are these people living in the in under uh, under trees downtown, under uh, freeway overpasses downtown? You know, it's a free world, right? In Oakland, why not move up to where the rich people live in Oakland? You know, and then all of a sudden, you know, it's when the the uh, homeless encroach upon the wealthy liberals. That's when they say, "Oh my God, we have a we have a homeless problem." So right now they're living, they're all living downtown. Move uptown. Move into the hills. Camp on a corner. You're doing it downtown. Why can't you do it uptown? And that's when the politicians will say, "We can't have any of this." No, no, no. These are the people that you know got me elected. We have to remove the homeless people from the wealthy areas. But why? Is there any different laws that pertain to the wealthy areas of a city versus the non-wealthy areas? Like take New York City. You know, where are the homeless hanging out? I'm not that familiar with New York, but if they're hanging out in the slums, why? Isn't it, isn't it just as legitimate to hang out in the wealthy areas? And if the police aren't going to enforce the laws in the poor areas, why are they going to enforce the law in the wealthy areas? I think that movement is coming. And the, and the socialists that run the big cities, especially on the, uh, on the East Coast and the West Coast, is where these cities are, they're going to learn a hard lesson. I think Seattle is already learning that lesson and 
Port of Oakland uh, drying up from any exports, any money coming in from the Port of Oakland. Uh, good night. Good night, uh, city budgets. They're already strained because of how much money they spend on the homeless problem and being a sanctuary city. Hey, Trump, send all the immigrants into Oakland. See what Libby Schaff has to say about that. It's our, our mayor. Anyway, it's going to get ugly, my friends. It's going to get ugly, and it's going to get worse before it gets better. And you, we, at some point, we will have to have a crash. And then it's like, do we turn to the socialist way of doing things? Do we turn to the capitalist way of doing things? Or do we try to invent a new way with cryptocurrencies? I think we're inventing a new way with cryptocurrencies. I am absolutely positive that is the plan. Whether the plan will work or not, I don't know. I, you know, it, It's all about how smooth the transition will be. And are cryptocurrencies actually ready to, you know, can we transact in, um, go to the store and buy a cup of coffee? I think we can already. I think they're just holding it back. At the Litecoin Summit last year, Elizabeth Stark from Lightning Labs gave a talk about how Lightning Network works. Lightning Network, all it is is a smart contract on top of Bitcoin and Litecoin. Now, Bitcoin and Litecoin are the, the two um, blockchains that Lightning Labs are working on. Everybody else says, oh, yeah, my coin can go on Lightning Network too. It can, but nobody's doing the work. And the Bitcoin, nobody's doing the work to right now, and I don't think they ever will, for because they don't have to, for Bitcoin to be used uh, on the Lightning Network as a means of exchange, opening up that, that another uh, attack vector. Um, it is very clear that the, uh, the core developers do not want to do that. And they don't have to do it because now, because of the Lightning Network, you can you can do the atomic swaps where you pay in pay in Bitcoin or, or pay in Litecoin and it's it is absolutely one hundred percent interchangeable. So no, and and this is where the big break comes from Bitcoin and Litecoin. Uh, the Bitcoin people love to say, "Oh, Litecoin is just a test net for Bitcoin." Yes and no. Yes, it has been. No, the future isn't that. They are interchangeable. So Bitcoin is Litecoin and Litecoin is Bitcoin when we integrate atomic swaps. And that is huge. And that is what is, it should be obvious to everybody now that that's what they're working on. Charlie Lee said it a thousand times. The, the core developers said they all they want to do is have Bitcoin as a, a store of value and keep that blockchain absolutely solid water, watertight. Uh, which is great. And no, it's not the same as EOS. <laughs> uh, EOS does not have an immutable blockchain. That's the big problem. Both the Litecoin blockchain and the Bitcoin blockchain are immutable. It means you can't change them. And you know, they're using, yes, it's off-chain scaling, but it is on-chain settlement of that scaling. So yes, you're going to have to trust that Amazon, when you open a Lightning Network, you do an Amazon, that uh, that the contract is sound, uh, but there's really no one to trust. But it is off chain, uh, so that's what they're working on. I I beg of you guys go to the Litecoin Foundation and look up the um, uh, video of the discussion that Elizabeth Stark gave about the Lightning Network at the Litecoin Summit in 2018, or you can just do a search for Elizabeth Stark at the 2018 Litecoin Summit. It'll come up. Um, this is happening. And it's happening faster than they're telling us, truthfully. I believe it's ready right now. There's a lot of nodes that are already in and operating and happening. Um, and, and we don't even need it yet. Imagine what happens when the banks crash and uh, Steve Mnuchin goes to the, the Congress and says, hey, we need a bailout. They're going to say no. Instantly, instantly, massive amounts of nodes, uh, lightning network nodes will be opened up. Um, and I think that's awesome. And I think that is the wave of the future. That is what everybody's been planning for in the upper echelon. So, yes, and that's when we hit four to one Litecoin to Bitcoin ratio. And Bitcoin people are going to, and already have, embraced Litecoin. Uh, the question is, when is the valuation going to get to a point where it's, people understand that Bitcoin and Litecoin are interchangeable? Um, and I think that will happen when it is needed. So right now, 
with Litecoin trading at you know $100 and Bitcoin trading at $8,000, uh, you got a, and it should be four to one, truthfully. Uh, that's a 20x move in comparison to Bitcoin, just to get to fair value, in my opinion. Four to one Litecoin. So that's what's coming for our friend Litecoin. And then if Bitcoin moves up, obviously Litecoin will move up exponentially. Whatever Bitcoin moves up, Litecoin will move up 20 times what Bitcoin moves up. Is it all making sense now? I hope it is. Um, so yeah, that's what's going on this morning. Um, again, later today I will be posting the Private Road article related to quite a few things, but uh, mainly uh, which all coins are massively undervalued, how to get your hands on them and things like that. I'll be going over some of my 15 um, top picks. And that's you can get that information at RoadToRuta.com and hit subscribe today and join the pri private road. And also, everybody on the private road automatically gets all the posts to the uh, Patreon channel. And it's all right there on the private road on the website. And Patreon, um, again, I have started a Patreon channel for those who really can't afford the... Uh, private road and want to get uh, more in-depth in the road route. It doesn't give you everything that's on the private road, but it gives you a lot more than I can do on YouTube and I, everything's being transferred. Uh, I'm trying to get away from YouTube until they change out senior management, which I think is coming. I think with the crash and the takedown of the bad guys, I think uh, senior management of YouTube and Facebook and all that will be changed out and there will be a culling of the bad guys and a a real push towards free market. Um, and I just posted a discussion with Chris Marcus, uh, about $600 silver. Chris is the guy who uh, had Bart Chilton's last interview and where Bart Chilton said, yes, they were rigging the markets 100% in silver. And we, we talk about that and, and uh, what the significance of that revelation was. So please consider joining uh, my Patreon channel. It's Road to Ruta. And um, it's 10 bucks a month. That's all I got for you today. This is BixWeirdRoadRooter.com. I'll talk to you guys later.